Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today in War Thunder it's time to have a look at some more CDK planes, which, you know, eventually may come to the game, but just understand that a lot of these have uh, been in the game files for an incredibly long time. We're talking some of them about five years at this point. Uh, so, you know, don't uh, don't hold up hopes too much for a lot of these vehicles, uh, but some of them eventually may come to the game. So, uh, let's go through them. We are going to do the Royal Yugoslavian Air Force, and also the RAF, and also the RAAF today, or the Royal Australian Air Force, and the Royal Air Force, so Britain, and also some of the Commonwealth. So let's get started. Uh, for the RYAF, we have only one aircraft. Craft. This is the Fury Mark 1A Yugoslavian version. And as you can see here, uh, basically, if you don't know what the Fury Mark A is, it is a uh, British biplane that uh, was uh, heavily produced. Uh, by the British, and I don't think, oh no, we do have some in game. So, this is the Mark 1 version in the British tree. As you can see, it does actually have an unlockable camouflage. You have the standard camouflage, which looks like this the silver camouflage, and then the standard one with the brown and green, which looks, in my opinion, uh, just not the best. But anyway. The Yugoslavians, uh, in the form of the Royal Yugoslav Air Force, imported 13 Furies and also built 40 under the license at the Zimaj and Icarus factories. At the opening of the April 1941 invasion of Yugoslavia, they had about 25 Furies operational. So, uh, this thing was used by the Royal Yugoslav Air Force in 1941, uh, showing that they definitely had a bit of an issue uh, with who they were fighting, since obviously they were using aircraft which were at least at that point five or more years old. Anyway, let's get on to the UK stuff. So the first one is an interesting one, the Hornet Mark I Grey. So, if you know the Hornet, uh, we actually have a version of it in the game. And uh, this version is the Mark III version of the Hornet, and you can see it right here. So the uh, the question is, what is the difference uh, between the Mark I, which was the initial production fighter version, and the Mark III, which is what we have in game? Well, the main differences are, is that the Mark III had an increased fuel capacity on it. It also had a larger dorsal fin and also external hard points for fuel tanks and bombs. So pretty much... If you take this uh, plane here, you reduce the dorsal fin on it, you take away the hard points, so pretty much take away the secondary weapons that we have, that pretty much would be the Hornet Mark I. So we have a very similar aircraft to it in game, it isn't exactly the same, uh, but you know, in functionality terms for air realistic it would be about the same. But when it comes to ground realistic, it would of course lose a lot of its oomph, since this thing nowadays can carry quite a decent amount of tonnage on it. So, moving on uh, from the Hornets, which I would love to see, we have a Lincoln B1 Silver. Now, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So, obviously, we have the Lincoln. Uh, once again, we have a version of the Lincoln in the game. Now, it's known as the Lincoln B Mark II. Now, one of the problems I've always had with the British bombers, and I understand why they do this, but one of the issues is that they all have the B on their names. So you can see uh, from the Halifax and upwards, you have the Halifax B, the Sterling B, Sterling B, Lancaster B, Lincoln B, and Canberra B. Now, the thing is, when I've ever read about, uh, you know, British aircraft, there's never been this B here. There's also never been this FB or this F. And the reason why uh, that these are here, at least in game, is to show that this is a bomber, a fighter bomber, and also a fighter. So... I'm sure at some point in the designations these ideas were used, but it just seems kind of superfluous in game when we know that this is obviously a bomber and same with this. So instead of just having the Lincoln Mark II, uh, which is uh, this aircraft here, instead we know it as the Lincoln B Mark II in the game. Uh, so it can get a little bit confusing. 
Now, the Lincoln 1, which is of course the predecessor to the Lincoln 2, it was of course a long-range bomber version for the RAF, and it used four 1,750 horsepower Rolls-Royce Merlin 85 inline piston engines, which are technically more powerful than the Lincoln Mark II's one. So you can see in the game, it has the uh, Merlin 68As, which have a little bit less power than them. So at the end of it all, uh, the Lincoln 1 being added to the game uh, would be very similar to the Lincoln Mark Mark II, but the main differences would be the fact that it says here that it would be silver and also uh, the fact that it ha it would have slightly different engines. Now, obviously, I don't think this would change the uh, playstyle of it that much, but having a different skin which would be closer to this Hornet here instead of uh, this Sterling here would be kind of interesting to have. Anyway, uh, moving on, we then have a change in nomenclature again, and this is where like this whole list of British aircraft, for me, has problems when it comes to the naming of them in the files. But, you know, that's completely fine. As long as the dev knows what is what, then it doesn't really matter. For a person who's looking from the outside, though, can definitely get a bit confusing. So we go from the Lincoln B1 uh, to the Sterling Mark III. So this technically should be the Sterling B Mark III if we were being, you know, pedantic about it, but luckily we're not. So the Sterling Mark III comes out, the RAF. Obviously, the Sterling Mark III is already in game. Uh, so this is where it gets a little bit confusing. Uh, the Sterling B Mark III in game, which is exactly the same as just the Sterling Mark III. As I said, the B uh, is superfluous to this name, at least in game. Uh, so when it comes to looking at it in the files, I feel like, you know, a few people have got confused, you know, looking over the file itself, thinking it's a different bomber, because the name is different. But there is no Sterling B Mark III, there is only the Sterling Mark III. Uh, so, yeah. Moving on, uh, the BF-109F4 RAF uh, version. So this would be a captured uh, premium aircraft, I'm guessing, or maybe even in the tree. Uh, we obviously have the USA uh, BF-109, the F4, uh, the premium version, uh, the 4.0 BR. And uh, the difference between this and the uh, the German tech tree version is that it doesn't get access to secondary weapons. So this is the American one. I'm sure they have one for the RAF, which would be pretty much the same. And it's kind of uh, odd that it never made it to game. Uh, but my guess is that uh, they didn't want to overlap too many things, you know, at once. So as you can see, the secondary weapons for the F4, it also has, uh, you know, the R1 modification as well uh, to make it slightly different. But yeah, uh, in the files, there is a British BF-109 F4, which is just kind of sad out there. Uh, the next aircraft to have a look at is the Mohawk. Now, this is one of the coolest sounding aircrafts and also one of the biggest letdowns. Uh, so the you have the Mohawk Mark IV RAF and the Mohawk Mark IV RAF TROP. So a tropical version. Now, what is the Mohawk? Well, think about uh, American planes which have a similar name. We have the Hawk, or the P-36 as it's known. So in-game we actually have these machines, um, the P-36A Hawk, P-36C Hawk, and also the P-36G Hawk. Uh, so, you know, nothing crazy here. And uh, therefore, the War, uh, sorry, not the Warhawk, the Mohawk, as it's known, the Mohawk Mark IV, is just a P-36, uh, which was uh, used by the British through, obviously, the Lend-Lease program. So this is a uh, British P-36 with the insignia of the British um, on it. Therefore, it was used by the RAF. It was also used in tropical settings, and uh, here's a nice squadron of them going uh, forward. And uh, here's a picture of a RAF Mohawk 4 in India in 1943, showing that, yes, it was used in more tropical climates, and therefore it would make sense if they ever add a tropical version to the game. But if anybody ever talks uh, about the Mohawk Mark 4, you now know it's the P-36, or the Hawk for the Americans. What you'll find with a lot of British... Uh, machines is they change the names uh, compared to their American contemporaries. A um, popular one is the Mustang. So the British 
know the P-51 as the Mustang, whereas the Americans know it as the P-51. And uh, same with a lot of other stuff as well. You know, you have the A-20 and then you have all the British versions, you know, the Boston, the... Uh, uh, well, we have a bunch of them in game already. Uh, you know, you have the A-20 uh, for the Americans, which is the A-20G right here. And then for the British, you know, you have the uh, Havoc, you have the Boston, you have the DB-7, which are all slightly different to the A-20, but the general idea is the same. Uh, but they just decided to name them all different names. Anyway, let's move on. So, the next one is something that I can't really pin down, and uh, I... I've looked far and wide uh, for what this thing is, and I do want to say uh, thank you once again to Johnny Gustavo for helping me with this, and also thanks to Unknown294 for getting me some pictures of some aircraft that I wasn't sure of, so therefore I could clarify them, you know, later on. Basically, you know, images from the CDK, we'll get to them in a bit. But the Night Fighter Mark II, so I needed to see what this thing was in the files. This is the Night Fighter. So it seems, to me at least, when I have a look at it, this is it in action in a user mission on the CDK. So it has radar, right? You can see it sticking out the nose. It has reduced armament from the A-20. It doesn't seem to have a turret at the back. So for me, this does look like a night fighter version of the A-20. Uh, but the problem is, the night fighter version of the A-20 had specific names. And we'll actually get to them in this. So, uh, this also could be the P-70. But once again, it's just called the Night Fighter Mark II. And it just, it's odd to me that, that it's called that in the files, but this is basically just a night fighter version of stuff like the Boston and the Havoc that you see in the British tree. Uh, it's impossible to tell what the guns are, just because it could be really anything, uh, because we don't know which version of the A20 series this is. My guess would be it's a Boston, but then again, you know, who knows at this point. The next uh, vehicles to look at are P-51 Mark 1s and a P-51 Mark 2. So we have a P-51 Mark 1 grey, so probably a grey camouflage with this. The P-51 Mark 1, so standard camouflage, and then the P-51 Mark 1 trop. So the P-51 uh, isn't technically in the game. Uh, so what I mean is the original P-51, uh, which was the first Lend-Lease version of the Mustang, which was ordered by the British. Uh, a lot of them use the Allison engine and were used for tactical photo reconnaissance and also uh, fighters. They were armed with 50 cals. Uh, they were obviously a lot more streamlined than some of their you know, contemporaries later on in the war. But these were seen as uh, pretty good by the British. But the main thing is, is um, as a lot of people may not know, you know, the P-51 was first uh, at least, um, you know, advertised or propagandized by the British uh, <laughs> instead of the Americans, and then eventually became an American powerhouse with a bit of engineering help from some of the British lads. But uh, the, the first step it got into the war was obviously with the British uh, from the Lend-Lease program. So this, to me, uh, being the P-51 Mark I, it would make sense putting it in the British tree, because, of course, the British used it. Now, the Mark II, we actually already have in-game, and uh, it is actually in the American tree. Now, I'm not sure this is a picture of the Mark II, uh, just because of the 20 millimeters, but it, you know, could be a picture of it. But the P-51 Mark II is just the P-51A. Uh, so we actually have it as a premium here. Uh, so this is the P-51A in the, uh, as I believe it's a gift vehicle in the American tech tree. And you can see it has 450 cows, so the same as the P-51 Mark I. But in the British tech tree, since it would have the British name, it would be called the P-51 Mark II. But it would be a direct copy of this aircraft that we see as a gift aircraft in the American tree. Uh, so, yeah, it's as simple as that. Moving on, uh, we have some PBYs. So you have the PBY-5 RAAF, the Royal Australian Air Force One, and of course the Royal Air Force One. So this is the Royal Air Force One, or at least the insignia that it would have on it. And then this is the Australian one. Uh, we actually have some uh, 
we I can show you some Australian skins uh, since we obviously have some in game. Uh, the Bowfighter Mark 21 having Australian skin on it with its uh, roundels uh, around this area, which kind of look off center. I wonder if that's supposed to be, but yeah, you can see this is an Australian skin uh, just because of the uh, roundels that are on it. Uh, so yeah, it's as uh, simple as that. It's PBY uh, PBY fives. Uh, we have them in game in the form of the American, you know, PBY fives right here, and then also we have the Soviet PBY five A, and then the British. We even have the British one, the Catalina, that is right here. And uh, I'm not sure exactly what the difference is. So this has three 12.7s and a 7.62 on it. So it's the Mark 3A. And this has three 12.7s, 7.62s. It might be the bomb differences, but this looks pretty similar to it. But anyway, the name is different at least. So even though we have the Catalina Mark 3A sat right here with a beautiful British skin on it, may I just say, uh, the actual ones in the files being PBY5s may be slightly different with, of course, different camouflages, which we see. Uh, so yeah, it would be nice to see them. At some point, then we have the B25J1 RAAF Olive, and uh, the B25J1, of course, we have in game. And also, <laughs> if we have a look at the B25s in the American tree, and we have a look at the J1, what is very interesting is the camouflage is already there. Uh, the camouflage is already present on the American version of the B25J1. Uh, it's one of the unlockable camouflages that you get. And also you have the USS, uh, sorry, USAAF camouflage, the United States Army Air Force one, which uh, hopefully will eventually load in. Uh, it actually looks golden right now, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, uh, so you have the United States Army Air Force one, you have the standard one, which is, of course, the silver. And then you have the RAAF uh, camouflage. So I've got a feeling that this is already in-game. But if not, then uh, this could easily be a premium B-25 that would slot into the British tree. The uh, Australians obviously used the B-25. Uh, the British used it in the form of the Mitchell, the Mark 1, 2, and 3. Uh, once again, just different naming, same aircraft. So therefore... Yeah, I can see it being in. Now we go into uh, what is, uh, quite funnily, I'll call Pandora's box. Uh, so we have some aircraft here. One you may recognize, uh, the J2M3. The others, maybe not a little bit. Uh, so the Intruder. What is the Intruder? Well, its full name is technically the Douglas Havoc 1 Intruder. And intruder actually means a specific uh, type of fighting uh, when it comes to aircraft, to intrude uh, airspace and do a little bit of damage. Basically very similar to what you would see from a ground attacker, uh, but a uh, little bit faster and a little bit more early war <laughs> instead of late war. So the intruder, or as I said, what would be better named the Douglas Havoc 1 intruder, would have four forward firing fixed machine guns. It also uh, retained the dorsal gun, but the ventral gun was removed, and it was a nighttime intruder bomber which had a bomb rack of 2,000 pounds. But the majority of time, if they took bombs, which wasn't a lot of the time, they would only take 1,000 pounds of bombs just for ease of flight. Uh, so if we actually have a look at the Havoc in game, which is, is based off of, the Havoc Mark 1 right here, and I say it's based off of it, because this is a picture of the, <laughs> of the intruder in the files, uh, right? So you can see it's incredibly similar. The only difference uh, between this, which is the Havoc Mark 1 in game, and the one that we see here, is that this little guy exists uh, in the Havoc Mark 1 in the game with the 7-7 Vickers machine gun, whereas on this model of the Intruder Mark 1, he does not exist. That is the only difference I can find between the two aircraft. Literally, it has one gun looking down, and it's not even a good one. It's a 7-7 <laughs> Vickers K machine gun. So yeah, uh, that is the first of the weird and wonderful things. Then, on top of this, we have the Pandora Mark 1. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Here is a back view of the Intruder Mark 1. Here's the Pandora. So the Pandora looks incredibly similar 
to this, doesn't it? It looks a little bit longer, mainly because of the nose. There is obviously more guns in the nose. Well, it looks like maybe about 8 or 12, something like that. Uh, but the main thing uh, is that when having a look for the Pandora Mark I, it seems to be that it was a version of the Havoc with radar attached to it. So some kind of either reconnaissance version or some kind of uh, information gathering version. But in the model, uh, it has a ton of guns on it. Ridiculous amounts in the nose. And of course, on this, the nose is open for a bombardier. Whereas this, the nose is closed uh, for just ridiculous amounts of weapons. So when we compare it to the Havoc, you pretty much just give it the treatment that you get out of the PBJ, right? So the PBJ, uh, if we look at the H, you can see that it has a closed nose, therefore it can fit the 75mm in it. The PBJ-1 also has a closed nose designed for all of the guns which can hold in the center. But if we compare it to its compatriot, the B-25J, we can see that it doesn't have a ton of guns in the nose. It still has a decent amount, you know, two sat here and one for the uh, bombardier uh, who is sat right here. But it is also open uh, open for the bombardier to be able to see where to bomb and also to have the bomb site there. So for me, when I have a look at this, the Pandora Mark I, it seems like they've, they've gotten rid of the bomb bay idea. They've added more guns to it, and they've also added some, you know, radar equipment to it, and also changed the in, the roundels or the insignia on it. Like, this is very much different to what we see here, uh, which is definitely a nice little interesting change. But yeah, there is just a bunch of random havocs in the files with uh, different uh, configurations of guns and different configurations of what they're actually supposed to be, which is always, you know, interesting to see. So, one of the last ones to have a look at is the J2M3 RAF version, which we can see here in this historical photo. And also, if you want to see it in game, uh, we talked about it earlier, it is right here. This Japanese aircraft, which is incredibly fun to fly. It is a really, really good aircraft. So, uh, the British actually took two J2Ms of the 381 Kokutai uh, in British Malaya, and they tested and evaluated them uh, using Japanese naval aviators, uh, avi <laughs> aviators, uh, yeah, aviators, sorry, under close supervision of RAF officers from Salita Airfield in December 45. So after the war, they actually, you know, tested these things to see how powerful they actually were. And the test came back showing that they were pretty quick and uh, quite maneuverable, you know, very good aircraft. It's kind of sad that the Japanese, you know, they had all of these interesting and wonderful ideas, but could never really, you know, produce enough, uh, especially when we're talking about the 44 and 45 area to ever properly put up a fight. But yeah, there is J2Ms out there, uh, J2M3s, which have British insignia on them, which were tested by the Japanese under the supervision of the British. So this could easily be a, uh, you know, a premium vehicle for the British in the future. Then, uh, the last plane we have is the Maryland Mark I RAF, this one. Now, there is something very similar to the Maryland in the game, and I'll tell you why, because it's basically the same aircraft. Uh, so, well, one thing we need to talk about. Uh, so, you see the V-156, uh, you see how for Britain uh, there is the V-156, and you see how for the Americans uh, there is also a very similar aircraft, it's called the SB-2U-2. Well, uh, there is also some similar aircraft across the border, at least there should be, and we're going to use the A-35B as an example here. So, the A-35B is an American-built plane. The American armed forces, and also the naval forces, did not want to use this aircraft. Therefore, it was uh, set to export. The French wanted it. They ordered a bunch of them. The A-35 eventually got there, and uh, they didn't retrofit it with different guns, like they did uh, machines such as the H-75 uh, that you see over here, where they, fit, where they fitted it with, uh, you know, the... French guns. I don't think they touched the engine. No, they didn't. They also uh, changed some of the 
you know, internal instruments to make it uh, better for the pilots. But the A35B, it was kept the same and was seen as kind of useless. And because of this, uh, when, Fran Fr when France fell, all of the remaining A35s, which were supposed to be exported to them, were just left in Britain and used for very menial things, whether it was for pilot training or whether it was for towing targets for people to shoot at once again through training. The A35B was not seen as a good aircraft. Well, guess what? There's a bunch of other aircraft which are very similar to it, such as the Martin 167A3, or should I say the Martin Baker or the Baker Martin, depending on who you ask, 167A3. This is another American-made aircraft which was retrofitted by the French to fit, uh, you know, the... Uh, <laughs> to fit the ideas of France. So they changed all the guns on it, they changed, of course, the bomb bays, uh, so they would fit French bombs, and it saw moderate success in France, but what happens once again after France falls? Well, all of those aircraft get given to the British uh, to use, either to try and help the Free French, or also try and just help themselves. And the Maryland Mark I is a version of this. So the Maryland Mark I that you see here is just the Martin 167A3 with different engines. Uh, instead of using uh, the engines that the Martin has, which as you can see were Pratt and Whitney R1830 S1 C3 G14 cylinder angels, at least in game, they put in some twin wasps and also various weapons and instruments were replaced uh, to help out the British air crews. So four uh, 7.7 millimeter Browning Mark II machine guns in the outer wings uh, with uh, 750 rounds per gun, so a hell of a lot of ammunition, and also one 303 machine gun was put in the dorsal and ventral position. So here, and also here, which is something that we see uh, in the Martin 167. So there would have been a Browning put here, and also one put here, looking through this area. So overall, a very similar plane to what we see from the Martin 167, but just changed for British sensibilities. Uh, a lot more ammunition, and also uh, more powerful engines. So yeah, that is the list done for the UK and also the Royal Yugoslavian Air Force, which hopefully in the future some more of the minor nations come more to the forefront and we can have some more interesting machines from them. But through this list, there is definitely some interesting stuff. And now we're going to go on to some of the wacky things from Japan. So look forward to that. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.